Hello, Mata. Hello, Fada. Oh. Perv. Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions before Ben. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, 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 Twitter. Jew sick. Gone dead. Haven't you been blocked over there yet? Not yet. Yeah. Everyone will be at some point. I hope so. Yeah. And uh, thank you for sort of some Patreon. Follow us on Twitter, Twitter account. Subscribe to that like button because that helps the old sexy algorithm. Mm. A like in a subscribe is like a titillating spanking. It's true. On it's like the buttocks of YouTube. Often in moments of intimacy, my favorite thing to hear whispered into my ear is algorithm yes that's actually my climax uh yeah expression it actually helps me to remember rhythm yes yeah uh today we're doing a movie review <laughs> of a film that is the official selection of india for <laughs> for uh the oscars for them this year uh and we finally were able to watch it we've been wanting to watch it since it was announced that it was the pick and we had never heard about it yep uh, and so if I believe on India in India, it's on Netflix. It is not here because obviously it's an award contention. So they what they basically do is they take it off everything. Right. They take it off. And then if it gets nominated, that gives distributors wide breadth of releasing comparatively yes. if it doesn't get nominated. So it's not so. here, but uh, we were able to get a copy of it. Uh, so that's fantastic. So if you haven't watched it, it's on Netflix. You can go watch it there mm -hmm. and we will talk about it as a film as a whole. And then we will talk about what we think its chances would be as well. Yeah, we have to because that's part of the conversation, that's obviously. obviously. And this will be non-spoiler until we warn you. Yes. Uh, so, Rick, your initial thoughts, please. My first thing I want to say is I've heard around the, you know the, the the water cooler proverbially about this being uh, I don't want to say ripped off, but borrowed from Cinema Paradiso. I, yeah, the, I, I think it's mainly the the relationship between. Yeah, them. it's this. No, just because it has, it's like saying any movie that involves a shark was a borrowed from Jaws. No, it's I I I know Cinema Paradiso. I just watched it in the past month. It's an absolutely beautiful film. This film doesn't need to be talked about in conversation with that in terms of it having borrowed anything. It's a standalone film that deserves the respect it deserves for what it is. I I love the movie. Um, we'll talk about its chances for the Oscars. I think it has uh, nothing but things that are meritorious to talk about. Uh, it's it's a, a really touching, very personal, obviously, film with solid performances that I am really happy I saw it, and I think it's one of the best films that I've seen in, in, in this calendar year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I loved the film, too. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, we will talk about the Oscar chances at the end, I think. But I can tell you right now, if it was an, a Hollywood film, it would be nominated for Best Picture. That There's a big difference, though, in Foreign Picture and uh, Best Picture. But it's proverbial, to, for lack of a better word, the industry likes stroking itself off. So this is... I, like, right when it started, I was like, okay, I see why they picked it. Yeah. <laughs> The, the industry just loves films about itself. I'll talk about the rest of that at the end. We're going to talk about the film right now, though. Yeah, I, I, I love this film. Uh, I got teary-eyed at the end. Yeah? For I'll explain because we're going to end a little Wait bit. Wait a minute. Like a legitimate tear? Uh, my eyes welled up. Wow! Uh, but it's. I'll tell you. Oh, wow! I'll tell you why in the end, though, because I don't want to. It's going to be the wanna... daddy thing. <laughs> I guarantee it's going to be because you're a dad. <laughs> uh, Opens up new doorways of the soul. It's actually not the dad. No, 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 but uh, it's the fact that it's, <laughs> it's your daddy heart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so That's awesome. Um, we'll talk about all that. But yeah, I, I, I think this film's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, it, movie. It's, it's an absolutely love letter to Indian cinema, cinema yes. as a whole, but it's particularly. Indian cinema, and I'm glad we, we got to see it four years in, almost 300 movies Oh, in, my stars, yes. Uh, because there's so many, obviously, obvious shout-outs, um, yeah. but uh, there's so many parallels to, obviously, the director, it's kind of, it's not a autobiographical about him, but it's... Semi-autobiographical. Semi-autobiographical about his influences and yeah. uh, his love for cinema and yeah. growing up and that kind of stuff, and so that's, it's it's just wonderful uh 
if you're a film lover, particularly an indie film lover, I think you're going to love this film. And not just because of the story content, but because of the creative nature in which the whole film is made. It, it take away the subject matter of the fact that it's film-centric. The film is just a beautiful film. Yes. Regardless, if this could have been any story, yeah. it would still be a really wonderful movie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think um, I'm, I'm sad. We The only reason we heard about it was because it got submitted um, and also, I don't know, like, it came out in 2001, so I'm not really... You mean 2021? 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not 2022, so... Right. I'm a, I'm a little confused, as also... It was the... It, it, there were um, graces extended because of COVID. Okay. As far as Academy... There were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but because they, they, they had started filming before the pandemic, and the pandemic screwed them up, and okay. they did post-production after the pandemic gotcha. and there was a grace period that the academy gave during the pandemic for films to qualify for certain years gotcha okay yeah. um but this film it reminded me actually a lot of um the lunchbox a little bit very in terms much of like western sensibilities in terms of like how they would appreciate this film I don't, even though I think an Indian or somebody that's been in love with Indian cinema for a mm -hmm. long time can appreciate it way more yeah. just because there's so much um, love and, and admiration for Indian cinema in this. Just like if it was a Hollywood film, they, yeah. they'd, they'd show Hollywood films and, and that kind of stuff. But particularly if you're an Indian film lover, um, I think this, uh, hold on, I was saying something and then <laughs> lost track. <laughs> Went off the rails. What was I saying? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, lunchbox. Yeah, it reminded me of like that style. I mean, maybe there was a lot of the food element because there was a big, massive food element to this, and the way they showed the cooking mm -hmm. and how it's a deep rooted in in the culture and how it, it kind of influences everything as yeah. well. Um, but it in a different way, obviously. particularly the filmmaking style. Yeah, is is very reminiscent of the lunchbox. It's a hundred percent that. If the go-to film for cinephiles I know who love film and want to see a great film from India, The Lunchbox is my number one recommendation. Yeah. I always say watch The Lunchbox because yeah, the like writing, it. the acting, the directing is all, it's film. Mm -hmm. And this is right up there yeah. for the very same reasons, though the, 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 the nature of the film and the subject matter is utterly completely different. The, the sense you have in the same way that I mentioned this film repeatedly, the Florida Project is, is, yeah. is, is a film, yeah. high caliber. The other thing about this film that I appreciate so much is um, I was thinking about parallels because it's such a similar love letter to movies that Cinema Paradiso has. And that's really, for me, the only similarity. I mean, if you're going to talk about a, a kid who fell in love with movies and a guy's the projectionist, uh, that's gonna. There's gonna be a lot of stories like that around the world, and you're gonna have one projectionist working. The, you know, it's yeah. so, other than that, there's there's no similarities. And I wonder, because I'm not Italian, and Cinema Paradiso is an Italian film. I don't know how much of what Cinema Paradiso conveyed had other metaphorical, symbolic imagery beyond the filmmaking aspect that pointed to culture and politics mm -hmm. uh, within Italy. But being as familiar as we are with Indian cinema at this point, I appreciated not just the primary story, which is enough in and of itself. I appreciated things I saw that were visual representations of things and even scripted representations of things that were very, very subtle, but really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my favorite things about the film is that anybody who's familiar with, with Indian film and its history and its life is going to recognize the Indianness of this film. Yeah. And obviously it wasn't just India. It was primarily Indian influences, but there were Western influences. A lot of uh, yeah. uh, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey elements. Well, there was a uh, thank you to Stanley Kubrick at yeah. the front of the film. Uh, I think even the, uh, the oh, I don't want to give anything away, but um, particularly the end sequence as well. Yeah, weird. which I want to talk about when we talk about spoilers. Space Odyssey. But let, uh, I just kind of want to get Everything about this film, I think, was was high class. Yeah, everything. So if you haven't watched it, go, just go watch it. What uh, the the young actor who who played our lead um, is that Bhavan Rabari? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Most of these people were from villages. Well. Never acted before. Shout out to the Satyajit Rai style of casting because everybody was believable. Mm -hmm. And he was particularly, the, the whole film falls on his shoulders. Yeah. And he does an so hats exemplary off, job. Hats off to the director of uh, being able to get that out of non-actors. Uh, but it, <laughs> that happens all the time in India. It's quite impressive. Because uh, <laughs> I guess he just like, go do what you would normally do, please. Just, yeah. I don't need you to act. I just need you to go. And the other and this, kids. This film was a lot of sh uh, showing, not telling. Which is the best. Yeah. yeah. And so like a lot of this film, there's not a... And there's dialogue, but it's not a dialogue-heavy film. No. It's, it's really a fly on the wall... Uh, and uh, Love for Cinema yeah. film. And so please go watch this film. And Love yes. for Life. It, it really is um, an, an appreciation for things that deeply, the things that matter most. Yeah. The things that matter most. So, uh, yeah, p we can get into spoilers and Oscar chances. Let, should we talk about Oscar chances first so that people who haven't seen it can hear what we think about yeah, Oscar sure. chances? Uh, so if you haven't watched it, please go watch it. Please do. Come back. And then uh, we'll get into spoilers in just a yeah. second. Um, I think... It could have a chance, right? Obviously, the, the final cut down comes out on the 21st, right? Yeah. Um, and so we'll see. Um, the reason I would still pick RRR is because it not only would have not absolutely 1,000% been nominated, it wouldn't have even been in a question. Correct. It could have won that category. Correct. Just because of how, right? Correct. I think any other year, I would have been completely happy with this, right? And I'm not saying RRR is, uh, like, a better film. Very different films. You really can't even compare the two, right? But if if your job as the Film Federation is to make sure something gets nominated and possibly win, you had a shoe in And so still, even though I think it could have a chance, uh, and because it's about film, and I, I see why they picked it, right? Um, and I'll be rooting for it if it absolutely does. I'll be so a thrilled. A thousand percent. <laughs> Just because you had RRR this year and the effect that it's had on America, I just, you could have won the cat. You could have won your first Oscar ever. It, I mean, not that there's, there's, there's tough category. There's a, there's tough competition this year. Yes. Uh, particularly, uh, what's the, 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 one? all quiet on the Western yes. front. Obviously that's, that's a big one. And that, that's probably the front runner. That to, is the front runner win. on everybody's but list. But in terms of, and, and there's a all, couple of others. RR might get nominated for best picture. <laughs> uh, it, once again, if you haven't seen our video, you can go, go watch that about RRR's chances. So if it has a chance there, it, it could be have a 50-50 shot with that and the other one at winning. Yeah, and it's really so, interesting that RRR, I mean, how many people in India thought that, that the first Oscar that they would get is not going to be in the international film? It's going to be a standalone category at the Oscars, yeah. uh, which is insane. So that that is my only gripe, is because you had a shoe-in uh, for RRR, and it could have even won the category. And if you were a member of the Academy voting, and let's say, first of all, you were a member of the Film Federation in India making a choice between this and RRR, you choose RRR. Just because it's chances. Right. Any other year, I'd be 1,000% right. okay. And I'm still, once again, rooting for this film. Nothing against this film. The only it reason deserves its placement yes. as a film that should be considered. Yes. It really does. The, the only reason I'm hesitant is because RR came out and you could have won. Yeah. And, and you would it being nominated wouldn't have been a question. Like it would have been the biggest one of the biggest snubs ever if this wasn't nominated. If RR wouldn't have been nominated yeah. and submitted, right? Yeah. Also, another reason that I'm I'm uh, hesitant, and you can tell me after you uh, after I'm done here, what you think about. It's chances. Like I said, if it was a Hollywood film about Hollywood films, it would have a thousand percent have been a Best Picture nomination. But the fact that it's an Indian film, and if people aren't familiar with all with Indian films, they're not going to pick up on why showing Joda Akbar, showing Mother India, showing all these other things is so... Shah Rukh Khan, talking about Satyajit Rai, is so meaningful. Right. They're just going to be like, oh, I'm sure those people are important. Right. Uh, and so it's not going to hit as well to people that aren't familiar with no, it, Indian it, cinema. They're no. going to appreciate it because it's about film. Right. And there's many things, universal truths about film that they're going to love. But that would be my one hesitation as well with them not being able to fully relate to this film. Uh, I agree. So, what yeah. do you think I agree. About, about its chances? I, I think, so, what everybody's been writing, and when I say everybody, I'm talking about IndieWire, Rotten Tomatoes, Hollywood Reporter, Variety, you name it, Right. The people who talk about that here in the industry, 
It's not on anybody's top 10 list. It's in a top 15 Teen. list. Yes, I saw, top, <laughs> I saw top 15. It's in the top 15. So it's not considered a shoe in but it's also not considered a really far dark horse. It's one of those films that's really close, and if it got it, people would be really happy, but if it didn't, they wouldn't be surprised. Having not seen any of the other international films, that's a part of it where we don't have a, a, a viewpoint you to really, really see if it deserves really only the nomination. Have four chances with the All Quiet on the Western Front. Correct. That's, that's, a, that's shoe a, shoe in. a shoe in. But I want to see and will, as availability becomes, the other ones to see who's really deserving of, of their yeah. slots. In relationship to RRR, they're two completely different films. When you're talking about simply the chances and the way the politics of award season work, it was a no brainer. That's why everyone was confounded, dumbfounded, use whatever word you want to. It was absolute ridiculousness to not select RRR for that alone. Of the two, as much as this is a more highbrow, high level artistic when it comes to the kind of film that's noticed. Mm. I still prefer RRR, mm. and my for for a couple of reasons. First of all, I, I said this during the review for RRR. It's the greatest buddy movie I've ever seen. Mm. It's my favorite buddy film of all time. Yeah. This is not my favorite fill in the blank of all time. Yeah. Anything. Yeah, yeah. It's still a great movie. Yeah. And not every film has to be the best. Blah blah blah. But when you have, when it comes to the Oscars, I don't care whatever the category may be for me. Let's say you have two films that are equally deserving at every single level, right? Which you can't compare some of these levels. Visual effects in this don't exist compared to yeah. RRR. Yeah, yeah. But when you, for me, the final arbiter for the Oscars is what of the two will be remembered 50 years from now? There's no question. Yeah. Nothing against the last film show. 50 years from now, no one will have forgotten RRR. Yeah. It's going to make Oscar history. It made Indian history. It is a historically important film in world cinema. This one is not. And that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with this film. But comparatively, I just, uh, the, the, the breadth of the directorial vision, the totality of the team's endeavor, the performances, the songs, the scope, uh, when it comes to that comparatively, I still don't understand why you wouldn't select RRR. Yes. So that that's our thoughts on that. Uh, I'm I'm thousand percent rooting for this film. I will be thrilled. I'll be so happy if it gets nominated. It's so deserving um, of the love and attention that like it's said. getting, and so. it's it's a shame that it happened to come out the same year as RRR because they're very different films, and there's probably millions of people who would say every day of the week, twenty four hours a day. I would want last film show than I than R R R. That's fine. That's the beauty of movie making. Yeah. Um, so that's our thoughts on on, on that. Yeah. Uh, uh, we a thousand percent be rooting for it if it's nominated. We hope it's nominated. Really but, do. Um, obviously, make me very happy. There's other caveats with R R R that. Uh, Whoa. Then you heard it. Yeah. Uh, uh, now little we're spoilers back, to end back it up. to the spoilers here. All right. So uh, now don't don't listen to this unless you've seen the movie, please. Um. Go see it and then come back. So yeah, let's talk about the the end. So the part I, I I teared up in was obviously when they were telling she was basically telling him that he could go. Mm -hmm. He wanted him to go and he wanted him to learn and because he, he didn't want him to become like him and he didn't right. want him to be stuck anywhere. So that's that's beautiful. Even though you know the dad's a dick, right? Um, what got me was the fact that the mom had twelve minutes of <laughs> primarily running time. <laughs> <laughs> to say goodbye to her seven-year-old and pack up his lunch yes. for him. So I can't tell you how many times me and my wife after this was done, we're looking to our children and be like, "You will never leave on a train yeah. ever. <laughs> <laughs> I will never ever send you off on a train. You are stuck with me." <laughs> 
obviously there's other things in this film that uh, it's like it's beautiful that they they let him do that because mm-hmm. he wouldn't have a chance to be what he wanted there and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, but I felt primarily bad for the mom. Oh, of <laughs> I course. felt so sad for her because yeah. she was so sweet, so supportive throughout the entire thing. She had this dick of a dad, uh, and she just wanted. <laughs> but she 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 knew that was what. He oh, was yeah. best for him too. But also, like, just be like, I, I don't know why you care so much about this tea stall. Let's go with our son. I and know. Open a tea stall there, you weirdo. Right. Right. <laughs> like that's what I would have like. I'd be like, oh, no, I'm gonna go with my son. You can stay here. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is a question of what's he staying there for? He just found out he doesn't even have his tea stall anymore. Yeah. So what's there for him to stay for anymore? It's very. But I, I do love obviously. And so it, maybe it was that. Maybe it was the fact that obviously they were letting him being supportive of what he wants to do and you know that's very relatable to any artist that you know wants to leave where they are and go somewhere else yeah, to pursue what yeah. they want to do so that's wonderful right uh, and so I, I like that I did like that it was very symbolic maybe it was not intentional but the fact that it ended with a train him running after a train <laughs> it's astonishing how many Indian films climax at trains I don't think it's a coincidence it was done on purpose oh yeah as uh, a shout out to how important trains climactic moments on trains mean to Indians when it comes to watching movies yeah. and where they have felt deep connection in movies yeah is on trains uh, absolutely so I thought that was intentional so I thought and that I, was speaking great. of the train it was it was almost Almost a little heavy on the schmaltz, but I adored. I liked adored it. Adored the train pulling away, and everybody happens to be there watching him go. The projectionist yeah. doing his whirling dervish dance, his buddy with the little mirror and yeah. the light. I thought, strains credulity a tad, it's, but the, but I the, it, I love it. It, it was, was dripping it was with beauty. really just a shout out to more film as it well. It was, uh, and, and then felt, the ultimate, like big fish ending as well. I loved the the shout outs at the end to yeah, the, and and the fact that he could see in all of the bangles the colors and he knew by the color because he watched the films get melted down and then the blend probably my favorite part of the movie is the blend of him talking about the legends of Indian cinema as a boy and then it's the adult voice talking about the American cinema that impacted mm. him and there's this interweaving while you're looking at the beautiful Indian women's bangles of which also goes back to the colors and prisms he's looking through on the train mm-hmm. it's just a lovely beautiful beautiful in fact the poster does a great job of hinting at the totality of the film with him on the train and the colors there kind of blending in, which are the colors of the glass he's looking through, the color of the celluloid melted in. And it it, it, it ultimately, too, conveys... It's so small, you could miss it. But the dad recognized he, after the destruction of the, of the 35 millimeter and the bringing in of digital, that he lost... He no longer had hope about his dream anymore. He put up the thing about an ideal boy, said, I'll go cut my hair. And his dad recognized he's going to become like me. He's going to have, he's going to live a hopeless life. And he, he's, I, I, if I'm not going to do it for me, I at least have to, I can't let hope die in my kid. Mm-hmm. That's, it's, again, <laughs> The movie's beautiful. Leland, I will never, ever send you off on a train. <laughs> ever. Uh, <laughs> until you're like 30. Uh, anyways, um, but like, I also want to talk like how sad the destruction of all that film was. It's pain- it was heartbreaking. So painful to watch. <laughs> I was like, please tell me this doesn't actually happen. Like, does that happen? Uh, I, Did you look it up? I didn't look it up. But oh. I, I promise. When, you know how much money you could probably have? I promise there are works of art that did not survive the transition from 35 millimeter to digital all over the world. That were either small films that nobody cared about and they were just tossed, or they were films that people cared about but no one had the care to preserve them um, the way Scorsese has done and refurbished them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I sadly. I'm confident that, that when we when we transitioned away from 35 millimeter to digital, yeah. most of them got tossed aside. That whole sequence was very 21 2001 Space Odyssey um, esque, without being like even though it didn't have the even uh-huh. though that was in this film. That was in the film. Um, it, it felt very 
surreal almost uh, what he was going through. Did, uh, another thing that's a real shout out to the director, and I would love to ask if this was an intentional thing because it feels and looks totally intentional. I notated that as his understanding of filmmaking improves, the quality of the film itself began to improve. Mm -hmm. You went from very basic standard shots at the beginning, no bells and whistles, pretty basic. And by the time you reach our climax point, which is when the cinema is losing the film and he has to go watch it, you get representational vision, you get sound, the score is incredible. The, that moment where he's looking at the giant ocean of film and he dives into it and becomes immersed and then you quickly go back and realize that's what he was thinking. Just, I saw the, the film itself progresses technologically just as the boy progresses with his understanding of film's technology. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything about it. I mean, all the performances I thought were really good. Very, very I, good. I love the projectionist. I thought he did a great job. Very good um, job. As did the dad, as did the mom. She, I love the mom. Yeah. Like, her whole character was amazing. Uh, she did a good performance. She didn't say a lot, but she conveyed a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all the food looked amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I was so hungry uh, watching this film. And uh, another another really wonderful thing that could get lost on Western viewers, the majority. The probably the biggest change in Dad was the cast cast system. Oh yeah, I mean that's a freaking huge change. Mm -hmm. And, and that was not done heavy-handedly, and it wasn't done revelatory. It was just, if you don't understand how important it is at the beginning of the film when he's saying Brahmins would never make movies, and then he sends his kid off to go make movies, mm -hmm. that's freaking ginormous. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and the... Um... Shit. Performances? No. I was going to say something. I forgot. It wasn't about the performances? No. no. The mom? No. She was great. The food? No, uh, it looked delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I guess and I, 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 there's something else that probably um, I, I'm sure was lost on us was that this is a, while this is a, a distinctly Indian film, I'm sure we probably missed some of the things that Gujaratis would appreciate. In and is this our second or third? It's our second. So it's Hello Rao. Uh huh. In this, yeah. I still find it crazy. Hellera wasn't the. Uh, I know, pick but for... I, it it. That's the other thing I love about this year. Is that Indian cinema is being recognized outside of the stereotypical Bollywood mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, we love all Indian film, and that it has. You know, globally, there's you can't say a word about the impact that Hindi cinema has made, but it's really beautiful to see. RRR and the last film show being in the conversation for everybody and hopefully everybody recognizing, although Netflix sure didn't when they dubbed yeah. RRR, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that this this is Indian cinema mm -hmm. is all the languages. It's a it's a it's a land of many languages, of many peoples, of many cultures, all living together as one. Just like the food we marveled at, where mm -hmm. everything tastes different, but everything tastes Indian. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Great movie. Yeah, uh, should be very proud. We'll be rooting for it at the Oscars. I'll be so happy. Um, so I think it is the twenty first is the, of, the for the cut down, right? cut down. Yeah. So it's this next week, right? Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully it makes the final cut down. We're rooting for you, man. Yeah, we are. Uh, shout out to Pan uh, Pan Nellen. I don't know Nellen. if that's the correct pronunciation. Forgive me. Wrote and directed it uh, and did a phenomenal. And Cyril Moore and beautiful score. Mm -hmm. Beautiful score. Everything about it. And, and, and Swap Roll and your and team did beautiful cinematography and the use of light, which was incredibly important in this film. Yeah. Any other year, I would have uh, probably been happy that this got nominated. Oh, yeah. It, it absolutely deserves it. It does. And I'm still happy. I'm yeah. Just, I explained all of that earlier. Yeah, we did. Anyways, <laughs> let us know what you thought about the film uh, down below. <laughs>